Well, tonight we are examining traditions to see if they are actually valid. Uh, we said we didn't hear one thing about Dr. Vine from Dr. White. Well, Mr. Perkins wasn't listening very carefully because I directly addressed it. And I pointed out that Vine says predominantly or, or fre- I think the term was frequently. That means not always. And Mr. Perkins had misdefined the terms before. Whether he wants to admit that or not is up to him. It's not a, a conflict between me and anything that Vines was saying. Then he went again. <laughs> Evidently, um, we, can, we can quote the Amplified Bible published by the Lockman Foundation, and Mr. Perkins knows what the Amplified Bible means. It's teaching Unitarianism. I'm a critical consultant for the Lockman Foundation, and I tell you, it's not. Now, who has the authority to speak in that particular instance? The fact of the matter is the context is mediation. It is not talking about the Godhead or Unitarianism or anything of its kind. This is a misuse of the text in toto. We had just a few brief comments made about John chapter 17. And he he says, well, who's this one true God? Well, there's only one true God. And if the son, the incarnate son, is going to address the father, what's he going to address him as? Uh, One of many gods? Now all of a sudden we believe in polytheism? In no way, shape, or form. Jesus then goes on to say that it's eternal life to know the, the father and the son. And then he says that he was glorious in the presence of the Father before the world was. We still have not received an exegesis of John chapter 17, verse 5, either. And then there was a brief mention of John chapter 10, but no answer to the question that was given. Who is it that says a body, when he comes into the world, a body you have prepared for me? Who's the me? And who's the one that prepared the body? If this is the Son speaking to the Father, he has to place this after the Incarnation. Yet the whole point of the text is opposite to that. It shows, once again, idealized plans do not speak. Have you noticed we have not had a positive presentation yet this evening as to who Jesus really is? Well, he's the one one God of the Old Testament incarnate. What does that mean? Well, he's the Father and he's the Son. But the Son is just a human being, and the Son was not eternal. And so can a non-eternal human nature that was once just a plan speak as the Jesus of the Bible speaks? That's the question that we have to ask. But unfortunately, given that Mr. Perkins now only has seven minutes, I don't think we're going to get an exegesis of Philippians 2, an exegesis of John 17, 5, or an exegesis of John 1.1 1, 1, that will be able to adequately address the issues that have been raised, but we can hope, because it's his turn next. Thank you for your attention. Let's welcome back Mr. Perkins to respond for his last seven minutes of rebuttals. Let's make him welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to be back here tonight. Um, Now, Mr. White has said to me tonight, just now, that in John 17, 5, that it is divine persons speaking prior to the incarnation, and then tells me I'm the one dreaming. And yet you don't find those divine, eternal persons in 70% of the Bible, and I'm the dreamer. Now, I'm not the dreamer, ladies and gentlemen, and I have exegesis of John 17, 5. I have Philippians 2 right here. I have John 1, 18. I have John 1, 1. I have tons of it right here. I just really, in the last one, didn't get a chance to get to it. When I started getting to it, my time was coming, running up. Now, in Isaiah 44, 24, one singular person using singular personal, by the way, reflexive pronoun, I by myself created all things alone and by myself. One singular person says this using a singular personal pronoun, which is the same criteria that he uses to come up with his Trinity doctrine in the New Testament. He says, well, singular personal pronouns indicate singular persons. Well, let's just apply that to Isaiah 44 and 24. I created all things alone and by myself. And then he said the historic Christian doctrine of the Trinity has always understood that to mean thus and thus and that. No, the Trinitarian 
have always understood it to mean that. That presupposes that the Trinitarians are Christian, that they're Orthodox Christianity. And that's what he says over and over again, that the Orthodox Christians, no, Trinitarians believe that. So we need to define our terms very closely. He says that... Uh, Speaking of Yahweh and the one Yahweh rained fire from another, another Yahweh, he says that, well, that's because Yahweh is omnipresent. Well, I hope you remember that when he starts telling us that one omnipresent person sent another omnipresent person. How can omnipresence be sent anywhere? I would like for him to define omnipresence at some point tonight. Omnipresence is not sent anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Omnipresence is already there. So he has three divine persons, each of whom one of each of whom are not the other. One's not the other. God the Father is not God the Son. God the Son is not God the Holy Spirit. Each are omnipresent. No one knew a thing about it for four thousand years. Seventy percent of the Bible, and I'm the Joseph doing the dreaming. I'm not the dreamer, ladies and gentlemen. Now he says that the context of Galatians three twenty is mediation. I'm oh, oh, of course, wonder of wonders. I'm just abusing it again. I'm just misusing another source. Every time I quote a source, I, he's abusing it. But, but yet he can quote seventy five lexicons in his books, seventy five sources in the same manner that I quote them. I'm quoting them just like he quotes them. I'm quoting the same ones, and I've got Moulton and Milligan sitting right there that he abused. And I'll gladly, you just come see me after this, I'll gladly show you his quotation where he has it in quotes that we need to go look up Moulton and Milligan on page so-and-so that it says this. And you go look it up. I went and looked it up. It doesn't say one thing about that. And he tells me I'm the one abusing the lexicons. Um, now, in fact, he tells us that the primary issues is did the divine, did the son exist as a divine person prior to the incarnation? So Mr. White is the authoritarian on what is the primary issue and what's not. See, he sets the pattern of what's the primary issue and what's not. We're all supposed to bow down to that. Well, I'll tell you what's the, what the primary issue is. The primary issue is, is there a three-minded God that no one knew existed for 4,000 years? Now, that's not a primary issue. I don't know what is. In fact, just in case I am accused of misrepresenting him, um, and Mr. White says there's no way that we can separate and we can uh, flesh out that he says there's no way we can separate the being of God. Uh, Mr. Soundman, would you play that track for me? Soundbite number one, please. This is Mr. White's own statement. Two different subjects being addressed. And you might say, well, why would John do that to us? Why would John switch back and forth? Well, it's, it's part of the, the fact that he's asserting if you do not have the Son, you do not have the Father. There is no way to separate them up. No way to separate the Father from the Son. Hold on, you're getting ahead of me. No way to separate the Father from the Son, ladies and gentlemen. That's what Mr. White just said. Okay, sound bite number two, please. Two different subjects being addressed. Number two. That's the number one. That's the first one. Now play the second one, please. I'll quote it. Yeah. I'll quote it. <laughs> On his oneness podcast, in a segment three, around the eight minute mark, he says this the father and son are separate divine persons. And I have that right over there. Yeah, he just told us nobody to separate them out, but then he turns around and says they're separate divine persons. On page 170 of the Forgotten Trinity, Mr. White says he's trying to avoid the idea of separate individuals. Yet that third clip up there, Mr. White says the son is an individual who existed from eternity, eternally with the father. On his ancient heresies, 26-25 mark, he says the father and son are distinguishable individuals. So we got God the father,